Hello and welcome back to Analyzing Avatar. It's time, Chris. Whoop, whoop. Season slash book three, Fire. Whoop, whoop. Now, were you shocked at whoop, the season? Did you... <laughs> were you shocked at the book three title, Chris? Were you like, oh my god, Fire, the third of the, 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 the elements he's been learning? The last one standing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was shocked when they woke up on a Fire Nation boat. I was like, well, we got there quick. <laughs> I, was, I was half <laughs> expecting it to be future. like... Ang already knows fire. <laughs> I was half expecting it to be like, we've uh, we found someone to mentor you while your hair's been growing. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, um, make it an episode longer. <laughs> Explain it properly. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, um, so no, yes. no, Dad, I wasn't. But um, I'm excited, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting, isn't it? When you because for us, we obviously always have to take a break between the seasons. Like we take a literal break because we do uh, rewind reviews. But I like that because it kind of mimics what would happen if you were watching this on television week to week. So we're we're, we're getting a very close experience. Probably not actually that close because I remember the some of the original airing dates were kind of squiffy. Especially, I think they did they did put a big gap like in the middle of each season. But they also did like a they left a gap after in this season before the final four or five went out. Um, which really, Dan? A... We've we've done a podcast on Steven Universe. You're yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you're moaning not, about know, there's no comparison. Really there's, there's no comparison. But I'm just saying, like, for my my original point was we've watched it in quite a traditional way. We're watching it sort of. We're, we're recording yes, these sort of yeah, one or two a week, nice. and we're even putting little gaps in. Um, so we're getting a, an experience, you know, somewhat similar to the intended experience. Um, but that's not a hundred percent true because of the fact that they said a little bit. <laughs> if we wanted to be very authentic, we'd take a big old gap after like one of the episodes of this series and then that allows us to do the um uh the the, the gap the, to to recreate the gap between the like the sort of first two thirds of this series and the last few episodes. But anyway, um, we, this week we're looking... don't worry, listeners. We we won't do that because Dan has planned out the podcast release schedule for the next ten years. So <laughs> we've, sure. got to, well, we've got to stick I, to that. So when we no, so we, <laughs> pretty close. But when we started analyzing Avatar, and we were also like, oh, we need to work out also how to do, uh, you know, how to do that and keep doing rewind reviews because we really enjoy that. I did the math of what when we would what, what we would do. So I've got us. Up until <laughs> I've just looked, June twenty twenty four. Yes, because because it, it includes Katora, Katora, uh, Katora. Katora as well. Kat- Katora, Cause, the cause fusion my, of of Katara and Cora. Katora. My my favorite uh, my my favorite element of it was uh, Dan sends me the schedule and uh, and we're on the phone and he's like, yes, it's all mapped out and I go, yeah, man, looks good and he went and Dan went, obviously, I mean, it's not. You know, it, it just doesn't mean it's set in stone. And I went, well, no, I mean, you know, stuff might get in the way, like, you know, if, if we decide to, if Jess and I decide to have kids or something. And there was this real sense of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, this is real sense of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah twenty twenty four is quite a way away. Um, <laughs> you could live a life, couldn't you? <laughs> You'll no, be living I, no I've life with me that. around, boy. I'll make sure of it. I've already said, you know, you know, labour be damned. If we're doing a podcast, we're doing a podcast. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no what, what you said to Jess was, um, so kids, uh, we can't really think about that until about middle of 2024. <laughs> yeah, no, and, then, and then going, oh, wait, 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 Dan's just sent me a message. Adventure time. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jess. Um... Uh, I guess we put it on hold until 2025. <laughs> Oh wait, no! Adventure time is quite long. How about twenty twenty seven? You got a slot for kids in there? I don't know if I'd want to do Adventure Time. I don't know. No, no, no. I think we're. I think. I think the. I. Th- I. I think honestly, in I, terms of like extracurricular podcasts, I think Avatar. Like, I think we've both gone. This is maybe too much. <laughs> and while we're really well, no, enjoying yeah, it, see, I, don't I was know about if we're to say make though, the though, mistake of adding anything else after this. I don't know. The only other show that seems to like fit the. Um, Fit the mold is Owl House. But... Owl House would be great. It's a really good show. Yeah, mm. unless we were going to fit the mold of our original spin-off podcast, Fringe Observers, and finally do what we prompt, what we threatened to do many times then, and do a Person of Interest. That was that's a great show. I'd love to rewatch because, Person of Interest. Because if there's two people that love doing podcasts, no one listens to. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <these guys. laughs> 
<laughs> hey, there was a there was an audience for Fringe Observers. We did that for a hundred episodes. <laughs> yeah, just because we did it for a hundred episodes doesn't mean like <laughs> doesn't mean anyone listened. You know what? That that is still one of uh, genuinely yeah. still one of our most listened to podcasts. Like if like in terms of like the back catalogue being listened to, people are finding that all the time. It's really weird. <laughs> I guess it's because people are stumbling across Fringe on like Netflix in various countries all the time. Um, yeah. But anyway. Think... Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Oh. I What's think happening? those. Thank you. Sorry, just brought in a cup of tea. Ah. Um, I. I think. Um, I think those podcasts are always. Yeah, I d- I've never done it personally. Whilst I've done three podcasts that depend on it, I've never. Uh, apart from maybe Office Ladies, but even that I gave up with. I've never, I've always felt that in order to listen to a podcast about one of my favourite shows, episode by episode, I'd have to watch the episode, listen to the podcast, watch the episode, listen to the podcast. Um, so I've never like timed a rewatch, maybe, but I might yeah. do it one day. There's some that I'd really want to listen to the West Wing one, which was the guy who played, who was in the West Wing, hosting it and stuff. Mm. Um, I- I think it just anyway, depends on timing, but I think that's exactly why Fringe Observers had a very, uh, let's just say, um, a respectable audience at the time, but nothing more. Like, like a totally like, oh yeah, that makes sense, sort of size audience, but has slowly grown in numbers over time. It's because I think it's like, people are like, well, yeah, when I do a rewatch of Fringe, I'll check that out. Like, I and I do think that's what's happened. So, um, you know, there's hope that, what I'm saying, Chris, is there's hope for analysing Avatar, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe if the Netflix live action adaptation is really shit, people will, uh, people, people, people will like turn to the original show and maybe and maybe accompany it with this podcast. Wouldn't that be nice? Like yeah, finding, we've not even worked like out finding what we're doing a, there. Like, like like pairing a fine wine with a with an appropriate meal. You know, that's not in your schedule, is it? Is it an MBS and we just put it on YouTube? Is it a what do we do? Who knows? <laughs> we'll Anyhow, out later. so let's talk about the Awakening. That's the name of the episode. Because Anne wakes up. Ang wakes up. So yeah, this is a the, to very briefly recap. And th- this is one of those episodes that's kind of like character heavy, plot thin. So this isn't going to be a long uh, <laughs> recap. This is the episode in which Ang wakes up and discovers that he's on a Fire Nation ship. Um, basically, in the time in which he's been unconscious from his injury sustained at the end of the previous series, he uh, they, they they captured a Fire Nation ship and are heading into the Fire Nation to essentially enact a smaller version of their invasion plan for the Day of Black Sun. Um, but Ang's feeling all guilt-ridden, feels like he's failed, because, um, you know, he just led through the Empire Strikes Back, as discussed on this very podcast, and he's feeling pretty shitty about it. Um, it ends with them sort of off that boat, and gonna, they're going to head through the, 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 the Fire Nation sort of separately on their own journey, while the, the rest of their ragtag team uh, meet them ahead, will meet them further down the road for the invasion itself, uh, which gives us, I think, a really good setup for them, just sort of like bumming about, which is pretty much what the show is. Avatar, subtitled, bumming about. Um, The subplot is uh, Zuko's back and he's been accepted by the Fire Lord and he's super suspicious of why. Turns out Azula lied to him about who who killed Aang, in quote marks. And at first you're thinking, well, that's bizarrely nice. I'm very suspicious of Azula. And then Azula outright basically confirms that her plan is because she suspects the Avatar is still alive through, I guess, intuition. Because she can't physically know that, I don't think. But she suspects the Avatar is still alive. And by giving Zuko credit for it, she knows that he is going to... Uh, he's going to get shot on eventually when the Avatar re- reappears. Uh, which is pretty conniving. My, my, very Azula. My interpretation of that... That's your recap finished, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we, I, I guess we could say that those two plots intersect in the middle when Aang is at his lowest and feeling like he's lost his honour. Zuko is being p- brought before the Fire Lord and regaining his, which is uh, where the two plots meet. I, um, My interpretation of the Azula thing is that she knows her brother really well. So when they have that chat outside and she's like, he is dead, isn't he? There's no way he could live. And he mentally mm. remembers the um, the water. I just viewed it as she she's able to read him well enough to know that he's being a bit cagey about whether he's dead, and therefore it's a good bet he might not he might not be. Yeah, or, or certainly safe enough bet to not take credit for killing him. Which, which, by the way, is my favorite part of the episode. Like that that moment, whilst mm. it's a bit whilst it's a bit ham fisted, the whole revealing of her. You know, she just you know the villain. It's it's quite James Bond. Do you know what I mean? She might as well be stroking a cat. 
actually the <laughs> consistency <laughs> the universal symbol for villain. You, but you know I what remember, I mean. I remember I'm Darth going... Vader stroking a cat when I was a kid. You're seeing it like on the on my t- and just being like, "Wow, that's a that is a true villain." <laughs> There's a there's a scene of uh, of Voldemort stroke it stroking, or at least there is between that and the cursed child. <laughs> hey, because oh, he's because he's got a kid. Um, the spoilers. The sorry. Oh, uh, the yeah, because the consistency with how brilliantly clever they've written that character. And almost to the point where you're like, how is she going to get her comeuppance? Because if she's suddenly stupid, I'm not going to... Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to believe it because yeah, she's, she's so she's such clever. A, she's, yeah, you're right. She's a, she's a true tactician. Like she's, she's, She overthinks, but to the best degree, like everything. Like she's way ahead. She's like 10 steps ahead of you at all times, regardless. So the idea that anyone's going to outthink her at any point uh, does seem unfathomable. How? Just how fucking clever is that idea? Like, oh, well, I'm going to do this because if I'm right, you're going to look like a dick. Like, so, so clever. Um, Yeah, I love this episode. I thought the symmetry Mm -hmm. between... And it's such, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to knock something down to praise something else. But Doctor Who Flux at the moment is a really good example of bad writing and the reason is because there's no it's just stuff happening there's just stuff happening and you watch something like this and there's symmetry and there's there's character arcs and there's well if we do this with ang and then show zuku doing this then it it, it, you know it, it parallels and it's just there's depth and it's just not a succession of things happening and and this episode couldn't have been that when they woke up on the fire when he wakes up on the fire ship and he's got hair and then the first Zuku scene we see the kiss between him and it's, that was a, that was like an and leading to a pause for you to jump in with that name there Dan <laughs> sorry uh, I was I I I'll be honest with you Chris I was debating whether to correct Zuku or not in my head what is it again Zuko. Yes. I got it right the first time, though, didn't I? No, you said it Zuku twice. And the first yeah, time, I, I just went, I just let it slide. The second time, I went, am I going to have to say something? I really should. But if I say it, it's going to interrupt the whole flow. Chris is making a really good point. And then there was a big pause, and I went, shit, I've missed something while I was thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. So when Zuko... Zuko. Maybe I need to pronounce it differently. Maybe if I pronounce it Zuko, I'll remember. Are you talking about... Uh, are we talking about Mai, maybe? I... Yeah, so when yeah. and so Ang wakes up with her, Zuko and Maya kiss, and I'm like, oh fuck, are we just gonna do a whole? There's a time jump. These things are different, like thing. And and the episode doesn't do that because it makes it all about character. Because it's good writing, Dan. It's good well, writing. You, you, you did... Part of me, part <sighs> of me feels the the Katara and the dad thing was a little rushed. But then I go, oh, I, that's why that's rushed because they're getting off the ship by the end of the episode. Fair enough. That's fine. <laughs> But I think as well, I think well, the way they did the Katara dad thing and had and, and uh, you know thing was, it was so it was it was cheeky but it was clever in a lot of ways because the whole idea was she bottled it up and not talked to him, right? Yeah. So Hakoda's like, at, like he can tell she's mad at him, but he doesn't. She's not voiced why, but he's just letting her get to it in her own time because he's you know, he's a he's he's a wise guy. You know, he's 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 very. Uh, he's perceptive, I think. He's empathic. I think he understands where she's coming from, but he also understands that it's not for him to say... Because every time she does it and she acts like a complete arse to him, he's just like, you're right, thank you, and walks off. And I was just like, oh, that's actually really... That tells us quite a lot about Okoda, like, as a person. Like, he's, he understands his daughter is upset, but he also understands she needs some time to process for it. So she's going to bring you up. Why? To him. Um, and the parallel they managed to draw later on when she is talking about Ang leaving her, even though doesn't he know she we we, we she says um, I know the world needs him, but doesn't he know we need him too? And she's talking about mm-hmm. Okoda and Ang, you know she she's and and, and and that's the moment her dad like it, the the conversation sort of they both open up and they have that conversation. So while it is seemingly done quite quickly, I think actually if two weeks had passed, it's. 
pretty it would be pretty believable that that conversation would have already occurred if she was a bit mad at him for leaving them. They would have been on that ship at least for a couple of weeks, right? Or they've been mm. off together for a couple of weeks. So the idea of making it so she's just been a bit snippy with him and then it all kind of came out, I think is both a clever way to stall that plot until we're watching, <laughs> essentially, mm. but also a good way to let it all sort of come out a bit suddenly. So yes, you're right. It does feel a bit out of nowhere when it starts, uh, but by the time they finish it and the way they dovetail it into what's happening with Aang, I think is pr- pretty damn clever as it goes. Yeah, no, um, I it's what, completely. This episode's parallels are remarkable. Like the way they manage to make mm. all these different characters who are all these separate journeys, arcs, like sort of, sort of intertwine at uh, these weird weird unexpected moments and and to to talk about your doctor who comparison the other thing of course is stakes um when you start doctor who flux with a scene where a completely insane and dangerous situation and they cartoon their way out of it then there's no threat for the rest of the series <laughs> so the characters are just bouncing through event after event unscathed doesn't matter how much you can pretend that they're in danger and claim that they're in danger every time they're just gonna i know they're gonna rubber band their way out of it like a cartoon character because that's just that's what doctor who flux is so there's no tension with this show the scene where the fire nation ship pulls up and is like well, aren't you you're, you're off course you're supposed to be heading this way, aren't you, with the West Division or whatever, they're trying to talk their way out of it. That scene has genuine tension and threat because you know that this is a show where their, their actions have consequences. You know, Aang's choice to separate from the ship is what leads to him to, and like and him to him learning that he needs to, you know, accept he's going to have to pretend the Avatar is dead for a while, even though that hurts him to think that people are going to think he's failed um, and that, that, that people are going to lose hope, maybe. You know, that idea upsets him deeply. And uh, symbolically burning the glider at the end. It all sort of comes together. There's consequences to choices in this show. And that's massive. And I think coming off a of season two, off, a, off, a, off an Empire Strikes Back style ending, which we talked about on the one we talked about that finale, I think this is the best, most, the smartest way you could approach this, which is a whole episode just dealing with some of the fallout. Just making sure that we know where the characters are now as a result of that. So that's what I meant at the beginning, honestly. This isn't exactly a plot-heavy episode, but it doesn't need to be. It's literally just exploring where everyone's at following those if, pl- those quite plot-heavy events from the end of the season two. And that's perfect. That's exactly what this episode needed to be. Yeah, no, I completely agree. But it also it does still feel... <gasps> <laughs> Excuse me. That's pretty how that always still... happens when you start talking. If you notice that, I was, I'm the same. If I've got a sneeze brew and yeah. I don't know it, it's only when I start talking that it will appear. Never when I'm, yeah, when the, you know, when, at its most convenient, which is when someone else is speaking. <laughs> yeah, and, and not even that, like, I started talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, um, let you, it let you get a few words out first and was like, right. <laughs> and came out of nowhere, by the way. It didn't, it, I didn't even have time. The sentence I was in the middle of saying was, I think I'm about to sneeze. And then just, boom, sneeze. Anyway. Um, it does still feel like shitloads happens though. I de- I oh, guess yeah, yeah, because sure. it, I guess it's because it's also um the the scenarios in which these things are playing out are visually really interesting to us because mm-hmm. I know it sounds stupid, but because Ang suddenly got hair, they're on a Fire Nation ship. Why are they on a Fire Nation ship? Oh wait, they're there. He's not been captured. Cool. Like oh, they're together. Oh, w- w- what's this portrayal yeah. about? Like you know, the, the, it's all the time skip gives us a really good, good excuse to explore this stuff. I think. Mm. Yeah, and and, yeah, and sort know, of being, being more in the Fire Nation now has given them like a different, a different whole, the whole thing a different visual feel. Yeah, yeah, completely. Um, and you know, I think it's and it's also it it really sensibly it you know Katara, Ang, and Zuko. Are the <laughs> are the real focus? Like you know, someone could come out of this episode and go, "Soccer and the Earthbender, Toph, Toph, Soccer and Toph haven't done much." But I think they're still, you know, they're still amusing. They're still bringing the comedy. And this episode, I just love the balls of okay, because it's it's quite, you know, I mean, you got to assume at this point those that were invested were invested. 
it was quite brave, I think, to not have a first episode be full of crash bang wallops and have a first episode go, right, these three characters are getting a character piece and that's what this episode is. Yeah. Like it's really brave, bold storytelling. It's the kind of thing that you feel like if it was being released now on a streaming service, it's the kind of thing that would make them go, should we put up two episodes first? And maybe right. it did air as a double bill actually. I don't obviously I don't know. But I think it's uh it's yeah, it's I think it's really bold storytelling. I would expect nothing less. Um but still it, and and also though, they are also setting the pieces. Mm-hmm. We know they're going away. The 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 um, soccer and uh, Katara's dad, and basically rounding up the gang. <laughs> Essentially, the implication seems to be anyone we've seen before on their side potentially coming back for a big old battle. So it's not even like they've not set the pieces and basically teased where it's yeah. going, which you know they have. It's it's quite impressive actually. That isn't it when you think about it. That this episode serves as this really quite quite intricate character piece because following the quite significant physical like events of the previous season's finale it, you needed a moment to find out where the how the characters felt about such big changes you know zuko chose to uh turn his back on his growth and sided with azula so he's got st- stuff to deal with he's getting what he wanted but was that what he wanted you've got this detailed character stuff for ang where he's now got to accept that it's actually to his advantage that the world loses hope for a little bit you know that the world thinks he failed and that's you know that's going to eat at that character so we've got this episode that's exploring all of that but it's also dealing with just the physical ramifications of the end of the previous series it sets up what happened to ba sing se after they, after that, uh, it also, as you just pointed out, sets up where the series is going. All in one very tightly constructed 22-minute piece of television that also manages to dovetail all of these various character arcs into each other, so they echo and like you know parallel with each other. That's fucking bonkers. You... Like, I, how how does it do all of that? I don't understand. Let's delve into the ang of it all because mm. I think there's a number. It's funny you, the 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 phrasing in you know not that you were obviously the phrasing you happened to use then was doesn't want the world to have lost hope. And I think if I was to summarize what ang's going through in this episode, it's I would say the fear of failure. Uh, yeah. yeah, the fear of him failing. And actually, and actually, to some degree, whilst they don't overtly explore it, a little bit of arrogance. A little yes. bit of he likes being the the avatar. He likes being the the hero, and he's now not that. They think he's he's succumbed. Um, do you think they juggle juggle all those things? Do you think they do enough to make get across that it is a range of emotions? Do you think one? Yeah. How do you how do you yeah. feel? Because I think in a way the, the they very much focus be- on the failure side, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, because I think, well, I think the, I think if, if we're, because they're arguably even like less complex issues, I think the emotive nature and the, you know, what are the characters feeling of Zuko and Katara (laughs) are... I love it so much. (laughs) The um, new jazzy way you're saying Zuko is so much better. Forget we've moved on. We've moved on from Fire Dude, and here we are at Zuko. Yeah, we've gone from um, we've gone from Fire Dude to Little Baby Zuki Poos to uh, Zuku, and yeah. now we finally landed everyone as close as we're probably ever going to get to the <laughs> to his name, which is <laughs> Zuko. Zuko. He's he's had a smooch, Dad. He's he's. he's I mean, I'm Zuko. still not quite over you saying earlier the Earthbender. Yeah, I knew that was going to piss you off. Apologies. All I'm saying is, she your is... name is now on a list. She's a, she's the earthbender of the group. Yeah, but show some bloody respect and remember her name. Well, if the, the, if the episode bender. showed me more of her, if if the episode did anything to remind me of her character, Dan, I might have done. Um, the... <laughs> it remember, it did questions. a little bit. There was a little detail, Chris. I don't know if you noticed when Ang passed out. She no knew before he passed out that he was going to pass out because she felt the vibrations and therefore felt his heartbeat. Yeah. No, it was all it was all very good. But most I thought of that us... was I thought that was quite clever. 
Chris, that they yes, stand. Yeah, tiny no, it's, detail. It, it, uh, missed it was, by some, I imagine, you know, because it's so small. Yeah, She's the one who goes, he's going to go, like, and notices he's going to faint. Do you know why, Dan? Because the rest of us are watching Avatar. We're not all watching Toph and her friends, which is the version of the show you're watching where, where you only Toph really snapped to full attention when Toph appears. It's a weird show. <laughs> it's a weird show, Toph and Friends, because it's sort of, it, it very much doesn't get going until season two. <laughs> Yeah, Toph and her friends is awful for series one. <laughs> it's just um, her friends. <laughs> it's a I show think... called Her Friends that builds up to Toph's arrival. Look, I, I, it's the prequel. I, I, I made no bones about it. Toph's my favourite character. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I won't. Like but, but here's the thing: I will not have this Toph disrespect. The Earthbender. She's the Earthbender. You didn't even of the make group. it. Yeah, but you didn't even. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not suggesting the information you gave there is inaccurate, Chris. You can keep saying it as an, ex- an explanation, but she is the Earthbender. Yeah, I know that, but that doesn't answer why the disrespect. You even you 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 attempt to get Zuko's name right despite not remembering it. Call him in Zuki Poos and Zuku and all that stuff. That's even, if you, I get, even if you called her like yeah, yeah. Trough, because I I'd forgot. be like, yeah, right, he's he, trying. But the here's the harsh truth, Dan. Here's the harsh truth. I forgot Toff's name. Z- Zuku, I just said wrong. Like Toph, I just added my blank. The same way that's I did not with acceptable Maya. for getting Toph's name. It's very upsetting for me. But it's been how long's it been, Dan? We've watched all about Steve since I last watched this show. <laughs> yeah, we did, and that definitely killed a lot of our brain cells. Uh, You're lucky I know your name. <laughs> for those who don't know, on our other podcast that we do in the gaps between these seasons, um, uh, rewind reviews. We watch old movies. Chris was challenged in finding. Uh, arguably the worst movie he could for us to review. He chose a film called All About Steve, and holy shit, it was one of the worst things we ever sat through. Um, our review of that available now on all your pad- podcast platforms, but also um, on the YouTube channel. So check, yeah, check that out. We so Zuku and uh, and Kataras. I think they're what are they feeling? Because they're you know it's less complicated anger and worry and all of that stuff. Um, not less complicated, but you know what I mean. It's yeah. it's less of a mix of emotions. I think that is clearer. They're they're right. This is what's going on here is clearer with them than it is with Ang, which is more open to interpretation. But you know what, Dan, I quite like that. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I think there's. A, I I think I think so. I think with with Ang's plot, I, I I agree with you. There's definitely like what the if you're just going by the letter of the episode. Like word for word, it's Ang is is upset about failing. But I think when you add the context of Ang's wider character and what you know about him, because you had you you even said earlier something that I hadn't considered, which is like an element of arrogance as well. The idea of him wanting to be the hero, which, which is interesting because I'm not sure that necessarily fits the version of the character I imagine. Because this is the character that to me, like, oh yeah, he he ran away from being a hero. He didn't want to be special. He didn't want to be that initially, at least. And I think it's interesting because. You could argue a certain amount of character growth has brought him round to being the hero, the you know the avatar, the one that's destined to sort of help everyone, you know. And and you're right, that does kind of go to a person's head, you know. It's 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 a little bit Harry Potter. Sorry to you know take a shot. It's a, it's time for, we've referenced Doctor Who. It's time to reference Harry Potter. <laughs> That's one, yeah, one following the, the other as the, always. Um, you, you know, know, I think of because I think is it, you can't. No one would be able to deny that. Um, you know, especially when he was learning water bending, the arrogant mm. side of him absolutely oh, yeah. comes through. No, you know, it's just uh, I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I'm simply saying it's, no, it's an interpretation not, no. I didn't get to, but I I think is totally valid. And and the same way that you got to that interpretation based on character behavior you have learnt from previous episodes, thinking about the water bending and how arrogant he sort of got around that. Um, a hundred percent, you've you've picked up on something that's definitely there. Is it outright said in this episode? No, but it's definitely going to be a part of it. And equally, I know how reg- how much regret Ang feels over vanishing for a hundred years and leaving people without hope. So I'm applying the guilt for that to this as well. And therefore, it's leading me to something that, again, isn't outright said in the episode, but is definitely subtly part of Aang's character arc, which is this very very notion that, you know, he once again is going to have to leave the world in a sort of hopeless state. He knows it's for the greater good and it's the right thing to do, but he, you know, he's seen the effect of him visiting all these towns and people being excited at the prospect that the Avatar has returned and might be able to help. You know, having that taken away from him is going to really 
going to be really hard. You know, he he was enjoying the idea that he was giving people who'd been hopeless for a very long time some sense that there might be a future for them. Um, well, uh, and also, uh, his, I, yeah, cool. I think the, the Katara of it all is wrapped up in that. You know, he doesn't want oh, right. to seem weak in front of her, especially because of the age difference and his his mm-hmm. uh, feelings for her. You know, they she he wants to he wants to come across as you know strong and 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 not like a not not like a child, which he's 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 not a weak child, but that in that moment is how he feels in his head. Right. And again, what what an amazing thing to do for a TV show to give us all these to write a character so clear but also so complex that without ever actually stating any of the stuff we've just talked about, with the exception of the failure thing, which is how this episode frames it, we know the rest is there. We've picked mm. up on it because it's been so embedded. Because, you know, he's actually a well-drawn character that you understand. <coughs> Doctor Who fucks. <coughs> <coughs> hmm. It's not anyway. great. Anyway... <laughs> Do you remember characters, um, Chris? You... Do, you remember, do you remember characters in Doctor Who? Do you remember when 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 people had thoughts and feelings? I do. I didn't just yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember when the companion actually uh, spent time with the Doctor? It wasn't just <laughs> inexplicitly thrust on an adventure. Like, how have we not had? Sorry, we're going to keep this brief. How have we not had an episode where of Flux where the character of Dan just turns to the camera and goes? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> no, I want the episode where the character of Dan turns to the camera and goes, I keep saying this doctor person's great and that I trust her. I've spent about three minutes with her. It's kind of weird, actually. It's just, how have we... The fact that we've not taken the opportunity to explore a man literally plucked from his own life and, and thrust into this mental adventure. Yeah. Is, yeah. Anyway. yeah. And I think as well, like just from a storytelling perspective, like... The the, 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 the the first episode should not have started with the Doctor and Yaz off on their adventure. We should have Dan should have been our entry point into the madness yeah. that is Flux, because it would have made it a lot clearer what was like, if we'd have gone in through Dan's eyes, that would have been maybe mm. better. But hey ho, you know, competent writing, not something we enjoy in Doctor Who at the moment. Um if you're enjoying it, great. It's, uh, yeah, no, I, oh, fair play, and I, and and you know but, what, I can see why someone would genuinely, um, because it's you know as I've said many times, visually beautiful. Um, if you if you're kind of after a romp and after sort of plots and sort of cracking action sequences and stuff, then fair play. Like that's there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'm 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 glad you're enjoying it. We don't want to not be. <laughs> we would love to be enjoying it. Like, and we it's really not a, we, the first two episodes, we really kind of like convinced ourselves that like this could be the start of it getting better uh because the first two the first one i wasn't i didn't love but i was like that's okay the second one i was like oh no okay we might be going somewhere good with this and then the third one it all just fell apart didn't it all just fell apart anyway what are your what are your other notes dan on um on this episode of avatar what what, i feel like i've ranted a lot what you got talk to me (laughs) I just oh. the idea that the, the idea that you were the one who talked too much on an episode of any of our podcasts is just amusing to me. Uh, <laughs> well, that's true. That's fair. Um, so let's quickly talk about uh, Azula achieving what Iroh couldn't. We've seen that we saw the fate of Bar Sing Se. Um, it's now under Fire Nation control. The last major stronghold of the Earth Kingdom fallen. Um, there ain't much left. Out there in the big old wide world, just, 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 I guess the the northern water tribe, pretty much, and I guess the the, the the southern water villages, but that doesn't, they don't seem particularly organised at this stage, um, or like you know a big force, you know, it doesn't seem like it'd be take much to take them out if they wanted to. Um, how are we how are we feeling about where where we are in terms of the wider world now, and how this this episode sort of made it all feel quite tragic, the situation. Yeah, no, I thought it was great. I thought the the use of like because you really felt um those even though there weren't many of them because of, you know, episode length. I really enjoyed seeing the shots of people that least we forget have spent their entire lives being told everything's fine and the world's great. Like but and almost maybe it's a shame maybe the episode couldn't do something more to 
to ram that home, but I appreciate why it didn't cut to someone going the entire time. We've thought things were safe or, you know, have one of them go that poor city. Da, da, da. I appreciate, you know, why we wouldn't spend time on that. But if you remember that, if you kind of have watched this, you know, relatively recently, those scenes where you know that a city that has been brainwashed into believing this isn't a thing crumbles and succumbs to a force that to them is mythical and not do you know what i mean like not been around for years or whatever so many doesn't even exist they don't even know about it that was really powerful and it just is a great entry into world's kind of fucked now guys (laughs) this is this is a problem (laughs) Mm. Yeah, it's 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 another one of the things this episode does. It is it, it definitely it's it definitely is a uh, something I'm noticing a lot actually with Avatar. A, a, a kind of a one of the, we've talked about this before, like this kind of like shorthand, almost like cheating thing that they do, where they like they know you've seen the other episodes because it isn't a you know it's a serialized show in many ways, you know. So um, especially the more it goes on, so they're sort of like banking on your sort of understanding they don't take as you said they don't take much time in this episode to make you understand the consequences of that but you do from the previous ones you know the, the, yeah. you understand that's the fine. significance of that and they, and they lean on that in this episode but that's that's fine yeah that's absolutely fine because it's, cause it's, still, uh, qu- it's thought... still quite powerful it's one it's one of the ways in which remember earlier i made that big old i had the big old spiel about how they fit so much into this episode this episode achieves so much the way they do that is by leaning on what the the, the building blocks of the previous episodes you know, they, 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 it's it's there's a lot of shorthand going on, but it works quite well. But also, I think you get away with that more in a kids' show as well. Like kids, kids yeah. pay attention and fucking understand and follow this shit more than like. Do you do you remember that? Like, do you remember like? <laughs> it's so weird how some things don't go. I probably at a push reckon. Give me ten minutes, and I reckon I can name. 60 episodes of the 64 episodes of Only Fools and Horses. 60 would be... I'm not confident I'd be able to do all 64, but I reckon I could name the majority of them. But, Mm -hmm. mate, I used to be able to go... You could say to me, what is season five, episode 17 of Friends? And I would be able to give you an answer. Like, Mm -hmm. because I would picture the DVD... I would picture the VHS boxes. It, It was a trick, basically. Everyone thought it was some mad thing. Really? I just worked out what V in my mind quickly worked out what VHS that was. Pictured the cover. There was then for therefore pictured the back, and then on, you're Chris. choosing between four episodes. The one you um, used, season five, episode seventeen. You want to take a guess? <sighs> Fucking hell! It's got to be around season five with late feet. We're we're dealing with the cop and stuff. It's around the one with the ball, but I think that might be later. If I that's the thing I can't do it anymore. That's what I'm saying. I've not retained mm-hmm. that. But kids well, no, I was just do. I was just I was but... just curious if you no could, no 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 it... no oh no I'm not getting shitty no 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 I'm not getting shitty I'm just I can't even the one with the ball the one with the cat I I don't know go on the one with the ball will be my no I'm pretty sure the one so... with the ball is just before the finale it is so that's episode twenty one <sighs> and you named the one no. with the cop which is the episode before this one. <laughs> Oh, you aimed, you named me. episode you need you named episode sixteen. <laughs> it's not bad then. I'm to be honest with you, I'll take that as a win. What um what is it? Uh it's the one with Rachel's inadvertent kiss. Yeah, yep, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I just can't so what you know what isn't that fascinating? Like so Oh yeah, kids pay kids way more attention. I I I, I yeah. <laughs> okay, so I as a kid was a big fan of Yu Gi Oh. But mm-hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh! was a thing I didn't really watch as an adult. I, I watched it a lot as a kid, loved it, had fond memories of it, didn't watch it. I attempted to go back to it once or twice, but just I either couldn't get into it, I didn't find the time, whatever. And then was it it was in lockdown last year, I watched like three seasons of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I found myself getting lost occasionally going, I follow like and it's not a complicated show. It's fucking <laughs> it's not a complicated show. But there were times I was like mm. I'm lost with all this backstory. Like, I need to I pay more attention, maybe. Like, and I just remember thinking, y- young Dan did not struggle to follow that. He, like, knew everything about this world. Like, he followed this in great detail. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, yeah, mm. you do pay more attention, yeah, I think, as a, um, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a young one when you're, when you're passionate about this stuff, for sure. Um, so I, kids definitely followed 
last and uh, thoroughly and understood exactly the consequences of this stuff. I, I, in fact, if anything, Last Airbender is the first, one, not the first, but one of the shows that started this new modern movement for like kids' shows, the way they go, well, kids aren't dumb. It's, you know, ki- ki- kids aren't mm. stupid. You can do this kind of thing, and that's fine. Like, you know, prior to this, like a lot of the kids' shows were like they were only they were they, you know it was one plot per episode, nothing overran. Like it was you know it was infrequent to find serialized kids' TV because they thought kids were too stupid to follow it, and it made syndication trickier because you couldn't just scramble the episodes around and do what you want. Um, but you know, I th- give kids credit for being smart enough to follow this stuff because they can. Mm. And like uh, the the most the earliest examples I've got of serialized television and the reasons I got into shows like Yu Gi Oh and Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid is because they were doing that. You know, they were completely serialized. You know, and that's and I re- that that was like you know mind melting to me. I was like, oh my god, this, this every episode of this just like sort of leads into the next. That's crazy. It's one big mm. story. You know. Um, I really liked that about these shows, whereas the other stuff that I would have been watching at the time definitely didn't do that. You know, um, like a lot of the sort of like American Power and- Rangers is one of the most formulaic shows on television, like and, yep. and episodic yeah, yeah. shows. But yeah. even even stuff like even the, the sort of animated sitcoms, not anim- sorry, animated sitcoms, the the kids sitcoms they did, you know, were like your Keenan Kells, your Sabrinas. They weren't really doing season arcs, not really. Um, so you know. Uh, it, you know, they just there was Except this attitude for... at the time. Uh, you know, you show, shows like Hey Arnold and like you know Doug. You know, they all just were like, oh, it's one story per episode, no over the season arcs because kids are stupid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and that funny like the, around the time you were watching Yu Gi Oh, I was probably watching Boy Meets World, and it's a similar thing. That that is a teen sitcom that did do arcs, did do character stuff, right? Even uh, even um, even shows like the Jackie Chan Adventures, which was like a, a closer thing to this in terms of it was an action based show. Because I was trying to think of like action based cartoons I used to watch um, to see if maybe the problem was, you know, the comedy ones follow the sitcom format of one story per episode. And I was trying to think back to like, did I watch any action shows that were animated? But yeah, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, episodic. Jackie Chan Adventures, episodic. Um, I'm trying to think of others, but my brain's failing me right now. But they were all still plot of the week. Mm. So yeah, so the... to, to, to Avatar when it came along, I you know doesn't feel it now because obviously we, you know we live in, we live in a world where like Steven Universe exists, you know. But um, this is yeah, very, this is, is revolutionary geez. for its time, really. The it's funny, isn't it? Because we talked so much about the character stuff, but when you think about it, it's also got a, a number of great action sequences. The I was boat just, attack. Yeah, the, that was my next. That was literally the, the next point on my list. Was like that sequence the, when they get caught. Is for first a scene of tension. Will they be found out? Will these guys figure out that they're lying? And then when they do, and it all kicks off, it's great. Yeah, it's brilliant. And even like Ang, Ang trying different ways. From surfing to kind of uh, air bending, water bending to be mm. like a bullet underwater, like but feeling exhausted and knackered every time. Like there's some really good visuals in that ep- in that episode. Mm. Do we? I take it. Is that just like a? It's just like a sea creature. We've not like met that sea creature or seen that species before yeah, or anything. We have. have we? Like it's just. Oh, we have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the creature from the episode The Serpent's Pass. When they say, ah, why is it called right. the Serpent's Pass? And then a giant water snake pops out the water. They have an equally good right. joke in this when uh, Sokka says something about like the universe like being in his favour. And then it pops out. And he's like, the universe just hates me, doesn't it? And she makes it, she says, you make it too easy. <laughs> and then when, they, then when it attacks the other boat, and they're just like, thanks, universe. Yeah, <laughs> it's a really good gag. It's great. I butchered yeah, it, it but it's a very good gag in this episode. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, no. So even like even the the visuals and the and the fights and stuff are are great as well. Like and, and it fits it fits those in. It's it's full of like visual references as well. Like the, the the Zuko at that turtle duck pond is a reference to Zuko's childhood. We got that flashback last year where Zuko mm. was feeding those turtle ducks when they were d- turtle ducklings. <laughs> And remember, he was like, this is how Azula feeds the turtle ducks. And he threw a rocket and his mum scolded him. Like, don't be like Azula. She's a psycho. Um, (laughs) 
It's a direct quote. It's a direct quote, quote. yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, 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 stop being like Azula. She's a psycho, says Zuko's mum, um, correctly. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's like, it's it, the attention to detail, even in stuff like that, is 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 very good. Um, so, yeah. What, uh, what else you got? Any quick fire notes before uh, we, we uh, trim it up? The very last sort of thing I wanted to talk about, we should talk about the two little visions or, or not Aang has when he's out there, uh, because we've, mm. we've not mentioned the fact that both Roku and Yue show up this week. Um, mm. So oh, that's cool. Oh, and we've oh, and sorry to clarify, we've also for the first time ever seen the Fire Lord's face. I thought we should probably mention that. Um, for, you know so why? You know why we haven't. That. You know why we haven't talked about that, Dan? Because I was pretty sure we'd never seen their face, but be- seen their face before. But I couldn't quite remember and didn't want to look like a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the first time we've seen the Fire Lord's face, uh, voiced by Mark Hamill. Still, uh, but yeah, I, I was going to say, funny. looks nothing, looks nothing like Mark Hamill. Disappointing, I know. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a quite great frankly. design. He's a he's, he is a very uh, he's an interesting villain. The the, the Fire Lord. We'll, we'll talk more about him as the season commences. But um, I just like. First of all, Mark Hamill does an amazing job with that with with his voice. I did notice though; it seems like and I could be wrong that they borrowed Mark Hamill to do another voice in this episode, and I did find that distracting. Um, he's the the general that doesn't know that that other guy is on holiday, <laughs> so you know, he's no, like, no one tells me anything. That I I'm pretty sure I didn't look it up, but I'm pretty sure that's also Mark Hamill um, doing right. a you know different voice, which I found slightly distracting, only because I I. I can pick Mark Hamill's voice out of a lineup because of his work um, in voice work over the years. Like he's he's very distinct to my ears. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so first first glimpse of the Fire Lord. What are we thinking? Threatening? Kindly? Ah, uh, kind of, kind of. Looks like a dude, doesn't he? Um, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Really, looked a bit. Yeah, looked like their dad. But yeah, I guess uh, threatening. Mm. No, it probably well, comes more from what I know about the character than yeah. Than no visions. more threatening, no more threatening because of their vision appearance. Just more sort of continuously threatening because of the what we've explored before with the character. You think sort of his appearance in this episode visually is kind of like the moment you go, oh shit! So this is he's he's stepping into the fray now. This is kind of like the the oh the oh my god of this isn't oh my god I'm seeing his face. It's ah oh, fuck he's present. <laughs> You know, he's been a shadow, yeah, he's, he's been a whisper yeah, in now all these previous seasons, and now he's physically going to be present for storylines and stuff. Yeah, he's he's now going to be the villain, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so funny, isn't it? Because obviously it's animation. So it's anima- Why did I say that so weird? It's animation, so it's not this, but it just kind of... You know, sometimes when this happens in live action, you get a bit distracted by like, oh, okay, now the, now the character's going to be in it more. They've cast them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, They're, like it's one of those things. I think did Mark Hamill appear in the in the first season? Uh, I think there was a shadow or a, an. But outline. it was his voice, wasn't it? Because he, cause he, yeah, because he's the one who tells Azula to go off after her brother at the end. Yeah, of that's the, one. that's the final that's the final shot of series one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and Azula's um, all looking looking menacing. So yeah, so kind of Zuko serves as a, as, a, as the villainous force in season one. Um, Azula kind of serves as the central villainous force of season two, and you've got to presume Azula isn't going away in season three. But you you feel the focus shift for sure, um, and I think this that that moment where you see his face is kind of them signalling that, and it's a it's a pretty cool moment. Yeah, I would agree with it's that. It's not then. like they did a reveal, and it's like, oh my god, his face is all burnt. <laughs> no, but I think that's more. I think, like you say, the reveal is more right. You're seeing his face now. Get ready for some some fire lord gets a coming for some fire lord for, for, some, for some fire lord ozai or as chris will probably say fire lord ozai have, have we ever seen fire lord uzi <laughs> uzi uzi poos have we ever seen <laughs> <laughs> little <Zuko>. uzi poos <laughs> big old uzi poos um have we ever seen spirits just appear in the real world where he's not in some sort of trance or state or anything like that uh that is a good question that's a great question well i guess we did see that the, the panda spirit was appearing in the real world prior to ang reasoning with it you know and its forest had been destroyed like all the other people in the town could see the big angry monster spirit and it turned out to be that panda spirit hmm 
I so, just couldn't work out. It was kind of, it, it, yeah. I, I didn't. I always didn't know how I feel about felt about it. I was I mean, pleased to he's see. He's definitely him. spoken to Roku multiple times, but it's usually when he's been in sort of like the Avatar state, or like you know he's yeah, gone somewhere I, to speak to Roku. Roku just sort of appearing to him, yeah, was a bit. I yeah. was I was pleased to see them, and I enjoyed it, especially Moon Girl, because obviously that's that's soccer's mm. X and stuff, isn't it? I think yeah. uh, a little credit to uh, yes, it is. It's UA uh, Nadia. Uh, credit to Nadia for this one. She turned at that point and said, "Being personal friends with the moon can be a help sometimes." <laughs> well, this is the thing with it because because they because in my mind it it had only ever been in trances and states and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll be honest, a little part of me when they appeared, when, oh, this is potential for some day. Like, do you know what I mean? It felt a little bit like... Well, it didn't well, feel, feel like they could, just could pop up. physically do a lot, could they? They were just sort of communicating. Uh, with yeah, true. It's not like Roku picked Tang up and took him to the, to the, to the shore. I mean, that would have been shit. Yes, yeah, but yeah. you sort of, you know, it's, 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 um... Does it lead? I guess the slight fear is, does it lead there? Do you know what it might be? I saw a video the other day of like the first appearance of um, every Jedi power, and it really shows you that. Do you know what I mean? It's like give a little and then take a lot. Like <laughs> by the end of the, at the start of the video, there's just a bit of force. By the end of the video, Ray's healing shit. Like, do you know what I mean? And I guess mm. I just maybe psychologically that was in my mind, or but I think that does sort of demonstrate my point of first they appear then they can step in physically and i don't want them to do that. Right. i'm happy for them yeah. to appear and guide him but i don't want them to be the that's the, the line answer. you don't want the show to cross yeah i think that's a, yeah. that's a fair that's a fair that's a fair point because you definitely don't want deus ex spirit happening you don't want the yeah exactly coming that's in and, and fixing things for ang you want ang to do it himself i do think it's interesting because i think the, the, we've got an avatar that was that we know wasn't a complete avatar. He's not a fully trained, fully experienced, ready to go avatar out the box when this series starts. He's learning to become that. So I think they've given themselves a lot of leeway to expand Aang's abilities if they wanted and it not be completely out of the realms of like logic. Um, yeah. I'm not going to confirm or deny whether they whether they crossed the line you're talking about um, in terms of bringing the spirit sort of more physically into this into this world. But I will say that I this episode this particular moment didn't bother me because I kind of even if that is correct and like it's the very first time he's just out of nowhere connected to one of those spirits because obviously the first time he spoke to Roku he had, he had to go to that special island he had to be at the top of that tower when the the sunlight hit that statue. You know, yeah, but, yeah. But for me, it's like it's more of a sign of Ang, you know, getting closer and closer spiritually, you know, to the, what he needs yes, to achieve. Yeah, you know, fair. he's 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 completing his journey as an avatar, and as he does that, he's he's getting better at being able to do that on his own. You know, um, because the avatar is the you know is the link between the spirit world and the real world, and Ang was absolutely clueless about his spiritual side in a lot of ways. In the when we first sort of introduced that idea, you know, the, again that episode with the panda monster thing, where he's like, I, "I'm going to just go talk to it, I guess." And there's a big monster. He's like, "Hi, spirit, I'm the Avatar, and I'm wondering if you could maybe not destroy this this town." <laughs> and it just backfires massively, and and that's when he first gets half into the spirit world and is and, and, and leaves his body, and you know, and actually realizes that that's the power he has. But also, like in in there, it's when he gets the first message from the dragon that he can go speak, see Roku. So, like, it, it is, he's clearly been learning more and more as we've gone on. So, I feel like they've kind of justified that element of it. Um, yeah, I, I did find what Roku said to be quite of interest um, in this episode. I don't know if you picked up on it. Roku describes Ang as having inherited his problems. Um, mm, yeah, I, I, I did think that was interesting, and because because Roku was the was a, was a, was a fire nation avatar and this war will have started roughly 10 years after roku died you do wonder if i i certainly on my initial viewing did pick up on that as maybe there's a story to be told there of roku's maybe early involvement in the, the you know these plots these these plans mm. to sort of for the Fire Nation to expand and it was and, you know because it it seems like shortly after Roku died did these plans go into action you know within ten years which I know it sounds like a long time well, obviously ten years is a long time in, in from many <laughs> perspectives but like in the in the grand scheme of the world of Avatar 
you do wonder when you, when you combine the sort of timing of that with Roku saying, you know, you inherited my problems, you, you, you do sort of wonder. Yeah. Yeah, no, I did find that. Uh, I did find that intriguing. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack with this episode. Um, it's good stuff, man. I'm I'm happy to be I'm I'm happy to be home. I'm I'm enjoying it. Mm. And obviously, the the symbolism at the end of the episode destroying the glider as well, sort of like Ang sort of succumbing. That's a really clever idea. Like take away something that we know and love visually, like something that's iconically Ang has is gone. But. Yes, yeah, it's it's nice and and symbolizes him, you know, coming round to their way of thinking and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So let's quickly do some trivia. There isn't a lot of trivia for this one, so we'll, we'll let's trivia it up. That. We'll call this stretching the trivia, <laughs> or trivia nice. in quote marks stretching it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, surely it should be trivia brackets pushing it a little. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's give you some trivia. Um, okay. So, this is the first episode in which we see Ozai's face. Yes, thank you. That is that is, that is a thing that happened in the episode. Uh, this is the last episode in which Ang's original glider is shown. Thank you. We did see it burn, so I figured that would be the case. Um, <laughs> Ang uses a piece Fucking of driftwood. Hell, all right. This should, be, this should be called Trivia Brackets. Dan gets sassy as fuck. <laughs> I'll take that. Chill out, man. Um, this one's best. a good one. No, I, I like this one. Uh, this is a good one. Ang's use of the piece of driftwood to surf a large water wave he created is identical um, to a flashback, I assume we've already seen, of Avatar Kurok, um, who also surfed in a very similar way. Oh, that's cool. He was the last water tribe uh, avatar before Ang. So it was oh, Kurok, nice. Kiyoshi, Ozai, Ang. Yeah. Um, so nice. yeah, he's a, he's a couple of avatars b- prior. Um, for some reason, in the credits for the oh god, this is again, this is like you know what we're gonna maybe I'll call this barely trivia. <laughs> in yeah, the that's credits good. Trivia, for this episode, brackets, Ozai barely. was <laughs> in the credits for this episode. Ozai was credited as Fire Lord, um, which would be rectified in future episodes as Fire Lord Ozai. Yeah, that's not mm. yeah, fair enough. Yep. Um, this episode is simply known as Awakening in the Complete Book 3 Collector's episode Collections Episode Guide instead of The Awakening. So they dropped the the. Hmm. It's just it's just Facebook, Chris. Drop the the. <laughs> yep. It's my advice to you, Awakenings. Or Awakening, whatever it's called. Um, oh, and here we go. Barely trivia. Are you ready for this one, Chris? I'm so pumped. This is the last one. This is the first of only two episodes wherein Azula appears without makeup. Mm, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Thanks. And you know what's crazy, Chris? I trimmed the trivia. The stuff I took out. Wow. Jesus. Here's one. Well, Here's an joy- actual one that I removed. At the exact same moment, Zuko thinks he has regained his honour. Ang loses it. Thank Why? you, episode, <laughs> for, po- for pointing you- out what happens in the episode. <laughs> Why did you keep the makeup one then? <laughs> Cuz I thought that was actually a physical thing that actually is I mean okay fine there are I mean, I'll be honest with you Chris I was just worried there'd be no trivia. <laughs> I tell you what it's less it's less interesting were it not for the fact that that's because like she was asleep. <laughs> like you know what I mean she's in bed isn't she I assume yeah. that's why. Yeah oh yeah 100% that's exactly correct Chris. Um so yeah um, I've had a look ahead next week's trivia there is some actual trivia so Cool. Well, that's look exciting. forward to some. Look forward to next week's trivia section actually being a trivia section, and not whatever this was, barely trivia. Um, so we're back to this this old chestnut, Chris. Listener questions. Mm-hmm. So um, if you want to ask a question, you go be a patron. As little as one dollar a month, you can get episodes of this podcast one week ahead of their um, iTunes and Spotify release. Um, and you can also ask us questions, which we'll answer on podcast. So this question comes from a listener called Chris NBS. Yep. Um, let's have a look. He says, uh, what do you think is Chris's best quality? Wow. What a um, question. That's a great what a question, question, Dad. Um, he always, he's, it's a double question. He's also asked... If he was any TV character, which handsome as fuck character would he be? That's like a sub question to the first one. Yeah, that's fair. So, um, best Let's best quality two. being seems handsome, like a, seems like um, a obviously. And uh, see, thing and is, doing... Dan, my ego, my ego would like a genuine answer to that question. 
I mean, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that because I want to. I, I was uh, dovetailing that into my next answer, which is with any TV character, which handsome foot character would he be? Obviously, John Hamm. <laughs> Mad Men era John Hamm. So we're looking at we're looking at we're looking at Don Draper. You don't. He's Don Draper. Oh uh, god, I'm I'm Johnny eating a little bit too much ham. <laughs> <laughs> Who I'd be played by. Johnny and a little too much ham. Here he is, everyone. (laughs) What did you say then? (laughs) Oh, here he is, everyone. Johnny and a little too much ham. He's here. He's here. He's (laughs) cool. Good answers. Uh... No, I think I'd like a genuine answer to the best quality. Fuck it. (laughs) Um. Yeah. So I mean, I, I guess, I guess, patience, Chris with these podcasts and me we've done this for 10 years now i your, i think your, uh your patience and the fact I... that you've stuck with this uh, uh which let's be honest with you chris we we've stuck with this because we've stuck with each other <laughs> yeah your lo- yeah. your loyalty to both me and this podcast is commendable or these podcasts in general because <laughs> it's not like mate we ain't, we ain't setting the world on fire with these podcasts it's not you know we don't we don't have millions of listens um and yet we've done it for um, just shy of ten years, so yeah, yeah. The, the commi- our commitment to it is is uh, yeah. is is phenomenal, given its given its results, uh, given but its we, relative but, lack by the of way, success. Yeah, but the result, but also it's worth saying is we're jesting there in part because the result is actually the the Discord and the community and the amazing listeners and stuff like that. So yeah. there there is a there is a huge reward uh, emotionally, if not. Um, you know, in terms of numbers or anything, I think yours. Uh, it's not podcast related, but I think yours. I really respect Dan is um, really anal about not judging other people based on hearsay. Like Dan, I think more than anyone I know will make up his own opinion on something. And as as regular listeners will know, my God, does he have his opinions? But like <laughs> he, when it comes to people, when it you know, you could you could. You could moan, I could have, say, someone at work that I bitch and moan about every day to Dan, and Dan would still meet the person and almost, like, genuinely be able to set that shit aside and, like, form his own opinion and stuff. Uh, And I think it's a very, uh, there's a lot of integrity in that, uh, and I think that's a real Mm. good quality. That's a a much better answer than my answer. (laughs) No, no, it's all right. It's, 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 a, it's a it's a truthful answer. I feel bad now. Um, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that, and I'll be honest with you though, there, there is a limit to that. Obviously, like if I if if you know, um, in a in a modern world, I think it's uh, there's a certain amount of you know, uh, you know, I don't need to meet Harvey Weinstein to know <laughs> Harvey yeah, Weinstein's yeah, a piece yeah. of shit. But like, yes, I, yeah. In general, when people tell me stories about other people, I like I there's an element always of. Um, there's two sides to almost every story, you know, and I've uh, I've been on the opposite end of it enough times where somebody has come into a conversation with me with a preconceived notion of what I'm like based on what they've heard with someone else, and I'm just like, well, that's not fair. Like now I'm working, you know, so I I try not to let that be uh, a factor when I meet other people. Yeah, I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm not saying Dan would go for a drink with Kevin Spacey. I'm just. <laughs> you know, it's only hearsay, guys. It's only hearsay. I'm gonna go meet him myself and find out. <laughs> First question I ask Kevin Spacey: uh, How many people have you, you know, like? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Um, cool. Yeah. So um, there you go. Oh man, I've got actual questions from real listeners, and I feel bad we've not done those. <laughs> Should we do one of those quickly? Nah, I think. Uh, oh, I do another one quickly. God. Very quickly. God, just because I feel bad that we haven't done a real listener question. <laughs> For context, um, Dan asked last night for questions, and I immediately, like a second later, answered. I was surprised you were up, you were look, you were looking. You must have like notifications set up for the Discord. Uh, I we happened to be watching something on my phone, so it popped up in the top, um, and I I was like, well, <laughs> I'm responding to that. <laughs> um. Uh. So for Avishai, um, one of our long time listeners, has asked questions before, um, and I've mispronounced and correctly pronounced the username on previous occasions. Uh, so hopefully that was one of the good ones but we'll see um, 
For American television fans who may be a bit more unfamiliar with the term series, describe the differences in vocabulary between the terms season and series in how they are used in the UK. It's a big question. That's it. Yeah. Because uh, to me, the, I think the main reason we don't use the phrase season and we use the, the phrase series is simply because our television series don't have the defined television pattern of an American show. So in America, they have the TV season where it starts in September and it runs until the next, you know, the next like like May, June. And then it goes away for a couple of months and comes back. So there's a TV season. So one season of a show literally means our season because it starts in September every year. Whereas in the UK, these things are on their own little production schedule and a show might, it might be a year and a half or two years before its second season comes. There isn't a, a set, like it's the new TV season. And as a result, things just are starting and ending all the time. You know, at random time. Not random times. Obviously, they're all it's all pre-designed. But I think that's the main reason the terms use. I think in in essence, their meaning is still the same. In that you're sort of saying like you're still referring to our series. But I, I guess the reason season is quite a helpful term though is because it does differentiate itself from the word series as it referring to the whole show. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I suppose the yeah the. Because in America, a series way, finale cause... is the show's finale, right? <laughs> yeah, because that's a good point. Because in my head, they're, they're, they're the same word. It's just one one's used in Britain, one's used in the US um, and other parts of the world. But the, the concept is fundamentally the same. But you are right. I suppose the American one does has the, have the advantage that when you're talking about the series finale, series finale it's it's the end of the whole show. Uh, whereas in the UK, that would mean the finale of series one, etc. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that that is sort of that sort of has become the difference or an advantage. But in principle, I think they're the they're the same thing. I think your logic as to why maybe we use series um, makes sense. Um, it's it's interesting. I don't know if we've always used series. You know, if you go back to the first collection of Doctor Who episodes, was that referred to as? a series um i i assume so maybe um but don't know for sure um so yeah no i i think yeah that is the american one maybe makes a little more sense but i really struggle to uh, you notice we i think you use season more than i do you tend to try and switch actually if you're talking about an american show you'll say season if you're talking about a british you'll say series mm. i tend to stick to series something feels odd for me about saying season but yeah yeah, I think it's just because of the internet, isn't it? Though I don't think I, I don't think I do that yeah. consciously. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know, people are talking about seasons of television on Twitter, and I'm and I'm parroting what I'm reading. I'm sort of like, it's, it's what do you call it? It's like, it's a, what do they say? It's like um, echoing, mimicking. You know, when you when you meet someone, and they bring a certain energy to a conversation, and you sort of mimic that energy, or mirror that energy, sort of automatically as a person. Just try, you know, when you're trying to, you know when you're trying to meet someone in the middle almost and then you both kind of come yeah, to a yeah. point it's a, i feel like i sometimes do that with with like when i'm when i'm seeing online discourse as well like you know it's it's my my discourse is informed by the overall discourse that i'm seeing you know like so i might come yes you know, which, we did, review, which go on, yeah to be to be fair i'd do the same if i was talking to an american i wouldn't say series i'd say season yeah right exactly so it, and it's not like i'm not like there's, I don't think there's a right or wrong. It's just two different ways to look at it. And I know why Americans have gone that route because obviously, again, as I mentioned earlier, their television is literally seasonal. Like, it's, it makes perfect sense. Um, although, I guess that's kind of... Cha- I think streaming is changing that, but they're going to keep the terminology. Um... Yeah, well, I was trying to think of... I was trying to think of, is that the case? And I think it is. It is. Like, Breaking Bad is, I've seen, referred to as seasons. You know, Westworld season one. I... They have mm-hmm. they have kept that terminology, um, mm-hmm. which you know makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, it's, just, it's, too, it's too much of the vernacular now. Even you know, it's one of those things where, like, the, where we used to live in in Bournemouth, there's a road called Post Office Road. No post office on it anymore, mm. <laughs> but it's still called that. <laughs> These things last. Yeah. I remember um, when I was much younger, I worked in a. Um, <laughs> I worked in a place that had something that they referred to as the party room. 
and it was always just called the party room. And when I went into the room, I was much, you know, much disappointment was had, Chris, because it was just a room full of junk. And I said, why is this the party room? Why does everyone call this the party room? And they said they used to hold birthday parties in there 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> so the room was known as the party room. And even though none of the staff at that building still worked there from that era <laughs> the name a better just... era it would seem by the way <laughs> what's that sorry a better era it would seem <laughs> yeah yeah so it, it just carried on you know it's like the next group of people came in like that's what it's called and it just carried the, the you know the term well, just you, was everlasting so you'd um, still you, you still call you'd still call a phone box a phone box even though it's more likely now to have a defib- defibrillator or something like that in it you could still call a phone box a phone box despite the fact in london you're more likely to find somebody smoking crack in it <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's not called a drug den or a, or a defibrillator, <laughs> which or, would be more you know accurate. I, mean? I know, I know. The police you, you in still my area call, were like you still... trying to get like um, statements from locals about their use as a, an excuse to get rid of them, but obviously all the councils are like, "But tourists like the phone boxes," and it's like, "Yeah, but they have they have problems. <laughs> they're they're a really yeah. great place to hide if you wish to partake in some drug use." And it's probably not yeah. the safest thing to have in tourist hotspots. Anyway, that's its own issue. Um, you may Chris, be picking the it tourists up. Like Dan, them. Da- Dan lives in London. <laughs> but Chris, the tourists like them. Yeah, they don't like you get witnessing drug use. <laughs> No, they don't, Chris. I know this to be true. Um, yeah, that's its own thing. Anyway, um, there you go. Cool. There we I go. feel bad Brilliant. about my answer for the for your question, but I guess you know that you've been you, that you're loyal. That's a, that's a real thing. You know I what? Even... I didn't think you needed to feel bad until we've talked about something else for fifteen minutes, and you've said that in a way that implied you'd been mulling it over. I just feel and bad. Still couldn't come up with anything. <laughs> No, 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 I no, wait a second, great. no, no, I'm, like, I'm, I'm thinking that, that 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 is my genuine answer, I just don't feel like I framed yeah. it very well, I framed it as like a podcast thing, but actually no, I think fine. your your loyalty to your friends, your commitment to your friends is remarkable, and I think that was on show, you, you know, even at your wedding, there are people that you don't necessarily see every week mm. that that came, and your, and your sort of love and affection for them was as evident as it was when you were, you know, when you were seeing people like, like, look, look some people we, we went to uni with were there, and it was clear that your 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 feelings for them hadn't changed an iota. Like, do you know what I mean? Despite the yeah, you know yeah, practical distance and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, that's 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 true. That's nice. Thank you. So I so I I was hitting at a real thing, but I guess I framed it as a podcast thing. But actually, yeah, I think that's yeah, that is so. that is genuinely one of your best qualities. Because yeah. otherwise, yeah, and, you'd, and, you'd have ditched me years ago, mate. <laughs> I don't think that's true because because I um because I forced well, you into like a podcast. Say, <laughs> trapped, I trapped the, you into the, our friendship by making a one, weekly commitment. <laughs> one couldn't one couldn't come because um, of uh, personal reasons. But the three the the three people I said would be at my wedding <laughs> when we left uni were the three people at my wedding, and you were one of those. And we weren't doing a podcast at that point. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So that was a very nice. Think, there you go. Uh, yeah. Whether you'd have been whether you'd have been a groomsman if it weren't for the podcast is up for debate. But the... <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I've given uh, out. I've given out groom. I've given out groomsman duties like Oprah's giving out prizes. <laughs> I'm like you be a groomsman. You be a groomsman. Yeah, yeah. You you Oprahed it. Everyone had a role. Everyone had a role. <laughs> someone someone did the someone did the ring. Someone did the someone did the uh, the stag do. Someone did the um was the was a witness. Yep. You know, and signed the paperwork. Yep. Someone did the speech. This poor fucker did, did did the sort of what do you, what do you call it like what was the what's the master, what's the master of ceremonies master of ceremonies yeah so I you know introduce people for the speeches like someone every every, every out, groomsman had something to do and that was um, and it turns out networking I think you networked more than I did at my wedding <laughs> I keep speaking to people they're like dad's nice. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> well, but you know, you know me yeah. well enough at this point to know that that's that's just me in general. You put me in a room full of yeah, strangers. No, no, no. I'm like, I'm a meet no, all great. of these people. <laughs> No, it was brilliant. I uh, I thoroughly uh, enjoyed it. Cool, right? We, that we, is, yeah, we haven't talked about this on this, but everyone in the in the gap between these this two, these two seasons of Avatar, Chris got married. <laughs> we we, should, we didn't yeah. say that, but that's the thing. There you go. Yeah. I, uh, by the way, we we recorded a video like on the. I remember this the other day. We recorded a video drunk on the dance floor with Freddie, who featured in our drunk Steven Universe video. And as far as I'm aware, nothing's been. Oh, I need to. I even need on... to post that. It's it's, it's, it's because it was. Um, I don't know what podcast we did it on. We did, it was it was it was tattoo. It was um, was it tattoo? What that no, was playing? No, it wasn't tattoo. No, no it was the girls. cheeky girls. The Which cheeky when did we do the cheeky playing. girls? That joke. I can't. I can't remember. It was. It was I, this it, podcast, wasn't it? Because it because you t- I said I was going to do a che- we were going to do a cheeky avatar. <laughs> Yeah, possibly. And then a big amount or of maybe, time passed. Maybe. So, so, so for those who don't know, we do, who don't remember, and see, in season two of this podcast, I said we had, we'd do a cheeky little analyzing avatar, and I forgot to make the analyzing avatar cheeky. So then one week I just played the cheeky girls. Um, oh yeah, at, it and was this podcast at, at Chris's wedding? <laughs> the cheeky girls came on. <laughs> So I did film a video very of, a, of me, you, and Freddie, who's appeared twice in weird little videos now, um, d- drunk dancing to the Cheeky Girls. <laughs> You'd have to, uh, I guess here is the place to post it, not to give you editing uh, joy, but yeah. Yeah, I'll, I guess I'll stick it in. If you're watching the video version of this, youtube.com slash UK, you can see it. If not, you can just hear it now, which will just be an absolute boatload of chaotic noise. Uh, that'll come after, I'll, I'll put it after the credits. That's the easiest way, rather than editing it in. Yeah. So there you go. So keep listening and you hear that in a second. Um, anyway, well, thank you everyone for listening. As, well as, as always, you... obviously, the... uh, go on. Oh, I was gonna. Do, it was gonna be so smooth, man. I was gonna do. I was gonna go. Hey, Dan, as as well as YouTube, where else can people find a podcast? <sighs> I'm so sorry. Uh, you you right. That was the way to do it, rather than my awkward. Uh, anyway, we're moving on. Um, <laughs> but we'll do it. Um, thanks everyone for listening. Um, we do appreciate your your time. If you're doing as much as that, you're helping support us just by listening. So you can get us in all those places if you you know that you do that in usually. So iTunes and Spotify and what have you. But one way you can help us if you're doing that and enjoying the show is by interacting with us on that platform in some way. So that's reviewing. Um, if you're on like iTunes and Spotify, you can comment and like on the uh, the YouTube channel or subscribe or any of that stuff. That's all really helpful. Uh, the other way, as we've already mentioned, you can practically help us is uh keeping the lights on as they say over on the patreon that'll give you access to the discord where you can ask questions and things like that um i think uh have i covered everything oh yeah you can check out rewind reviews last series of rewind reviews we just did a lot of fun um i don't know how many of the analyzing avatar listeners pop over to that podcast but it's uh it's, it's great fun we review a bunch of quests some questionable some very good films um we had, we had a good run this, this year, year. What do we do on this last Dumber, season? The, yep. the Matrix trilogy. Uh, Memento. About Sixth Steve. Sense. Memento. Memento, sorry. Uh, Die Hard. Yep. Yes, Die Hard. We did Die Hard. Be, yeah, that will be up by the time this goes up. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beetlejuice. Yes. Mm. All good stuff. So check it out. And then mm. the previous seasons, we covered all sorts of stuff like Back to the Future and Groundhog Day and... Star Wars and the Mighty Toy Morphin Story. Power Rangers movie and tons of stuff. So yeah, go have a look back through. We've done like 40 odd episodes of that show now. Um, though I'm sure there'll be something you might enjoy in there. Uh, yeah, I, I know this this isn't gone. the place for it and we've already gone over. But just quickly, from your tweet, does that mean you have, because uh, this is kind of the, the rewind review slot, from your tweet the other day, um, does this mean you have convinced Nadia to power through and watch the other four Die Hard movies? Um, yes, it's uh, yeah, we because we, we, also awesome. there's the convenience of the fact that they're all on Disney Plus, or I think they're all on Disney Plus. Um, yeah, there they are. Yeah, <laughs> we, but hey, checked, when it looked, I checked that, I didn't know I, it's occurred to me the first ones on there are the sequels, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I see, I assume, no, but so. when you because when because I in fact because I think now I don't think when we reviewed Die Hard it was on, but I saw the other day. Unless they've done that cheeky thing where it's a banner that says Die Hard and when you click on it, it's just the sequels. Because for ages, it was just the sequels. The first one wasn't on there. But I think now the first one is. The first one is definitely on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's exciting. How far have you got? Just Die Hard 2. We have, no, we haven't watched that yet. What, what, what tweet did you see that made you think we'd already watched Die Hard 2? 
You said the sequel to Die Hard should be called Die Hard, so no one can convince me otherwise. Oh no, yeah, that's that was us talking about it that day. We were, I was like, uh, yeah, that. So we haven't actually physically watched it yet. I understand uh, that. I did wonder where you. Oh uh, yeah, I thought that meant you'd watched it. No, no, that was that was me. That was the day I was convincing Nadia we should do it. So we are going to do it, but we haven't had a chance to actually right. get cracking yet. Um, yeah, cool. the sequel right. to Die Hard should be called Die Hards. If Alien is Aliens, Die Hard should be Die Hards. Well, it was wasn't it technically Die Hard Two, Die Harder? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Die Harder has sort of been lost to time, but yeah, yeah. I think technically. So it's Die Hard, cool. Die Harder, Die Hard with a Vengeance, Die Hard 4.0, or, 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 or Live Free and Die Hard is actually Live actual Free or style. Die Hard, and then A Good Day to Die Hard. A Good Day to Die Hard. Yeah, I like Live Free and Die Hard. That's good. Uh, that's better than what they marketed it marketed as at, at the time. on like The DVD I've got is literally Die Hard 4.0, which is a terrible name yeah, for that's. Movie. Awful. Why does it even need the? Why does it need the point? <laughs> to make it digital. To make it. It's all about computers, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So it's it's version four point oh. Mm. It's clever that. Mm. Anyway, uh, you can also if you want to complain about the fact that this podcast stopped talking about Avatar about an hour ago, you're welcome to do so uh, by getting in touch with us. Uh, mail at nothing but static at cut uk or I'm on Twitter at dan doolan and Chris is on. Uh, Twitter at C Billingham two M's where you can hear great tweets from myself and him, uh, such as the, the the aforementioned Die Hard tweet, which was a real banger that got, I believe, a well, grand total of zero likes. Uh- <laughs> well, here's a here's a stat for you, Dan, um, because obviously, so Dan tweeted the other day about how someone stopped him and asked him uh, no, he- for drugs, and he found it very funny the the notion that anyone could look at him and think that. To which I responded, "Is it possible we thought you were homeless?" Um, my cousin liked that tweet and then sent me a message that says, you do realise you haven't tweeted anything that isn't a response to Dan in like 18 months <laughs> or something <laughs> like crazy. Uh, so, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good tweeting though, I thought. Yeah, it was a good one. Made me chuckle. Made me chuckle. And it got more likes than my original tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. There you go. Yeah, check us out in all those places and we will we will be back. Mm-hmm. What's the episode title next week, Daniel? It's called The Headband. So we're going to be Ooh. coming back to, 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 to talk about that one. I, you can probably imagine what that is. Very, very excited about this one. This is, I'll give you a little tease, Chris. This mm. is maybe the episode Nadia and I quote at each other the most. Well, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, yeah. Were, were, and Nadia was actually very excited. She wants to watch this one with me, so I'm hoping she's still about and that we're not going to cut into. Her. She's got a driving lesson this morning, so I want to, I want to see if we can watch it before she gets gone. And she wanted to watch it with me. So yeah, um, we'll wrap it up. But thanks everyone for listening. Um, as always, I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham, and we'll see you in a week's time when we sit down to discuss the headband.